thank you very much for having me here. I'm very honored to give the Howard White Lecture. Um, thank you, Beryl, for your introduction. Thank you, Manny, for inviting me. Um, I, just uh, to explain this is a little bit, we're starting off a little bit different, because this doesn't really have much to do with evaluation, though maybe you'll be able to make some connections uh, of, of your own. Um, But before I say anything at all, uh, let me play for you this introductory video that we have for this project, 100 Homes, uh, and then I'll uh, talk afterwards. India's population is about 1.4 billion people. That's one-sixth of everybody on Earth. What if you took all those people living all across the country, each in their own unique way, and represented them in only 100 homes? In 2018, a team from India and four other countries traveled around for the year. From Himachal Pradesh in the north to Kerala in the south, from East Mumbai to West Bengal. We did a survey to see how much families were spending on things. But then we did something the normal survey doesn't do. We went back and documented every home and the people in them. So what we ended up with was something new. We now have the same data economists use to figure out who's worse off and who's better off and to calculate the poverty line. But we also have a way of seeing what people's lives are actually like, a visual survey of India. So we can start to see the difference between wealth and poverty as it looks on paper, compared with how it looks in real life. Uh, well, that pretty much sums it up. That's all I really have to say. We found... <laughs> Uh, 100 homes across the country uh, that illustrate the distribution of consumption per capita. In some audiences, maybe I'd have to go into great detail about what that's all about, but that's what this is. I'll, I'll go into it a little bit, but for most of you, this will be repetition. Um, and after choosing 100 homes that fit this distribution, uh, we went and took photos, videos, 360 degree uh, images of people's homes just to show uh, what all of that looks like in real life instead of just our statistics. Uh, the product is um, uh, basically just this website, 100 Homes, uh, what it's going to be called eventually. Well, it'll be 100 Homes. The rest of it, I don't know. Um, and uh, most of this talk is really just to explore a little bit about what's on the website, how it might be used, and why you might find it interesting, or why you just might skip over it and turn on YouTube. Um, but the main product is really just the website. Uh, the, uh, let me say just a couple things first before getting into uh, uh, the, the content. First, I want to give uh, my great appreciation to the Gates Foundation, um, India, for financial support for this project, especially Pooja Segal and Archana Vyas. I don't know if they're here. Uh, and originally, uh, Giran Bihari, who was the director at the time that I first approached them. Um, but the, and I wanted to thank them both for the money, which was essential, uh, and also for their continuing patience, since it's taken a little extra time. Uh, and speaking of patience, <laughs> Uh, this is a, um, what should you call it delicately, a soft launch, is that what, it's, is that what those are called? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's something between an alpha version and a beta version, uh, and I will welcome all of your comments. I'll give you my email at the end so for you to send in comments, uh, ideas on content and functionality um, as we uh, uh, actually, uh, finalize it. But before getting into the weeds of uh, methodology and conclusion, let's play a game. Which one's uh, wealthier? Left is A, right is B. I'll let this uh, play for a few seconds. This is one of the 360 degree pictures of people's homes. I won't give you any advice. It's just whichever one you think happens to uh, strike you as the one that's better off. Uh, no, from now on, it's not worth it because everybody on the, who would say uh, the right is probably uh, being biased by the people on the left. Uh, how about this one? These are two different, right? This guy seems the same. It's okay. Uh, 
Okay, so it looked like for this one, it's the, that's okay. Um, we're gonna do the right. We thought that the right was wealthier. This time you got it right. <laughs> oh, they were different houses, okay. Um, however, you might also keep in mind exactly how sure were you. This is the third uh, set. You can, uh, I'll take a little bit of a look. Uh, so ultimately, when we get to the section called the homes, uh, you'll be able to look at all 100 homes approximately this way. Uh, are we ready for this? Hey, I didn't think this was going to work. You're actually doing this. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I think that's enough, right? It's uh, definitely the house on the left, correct? Wrong. <laughs> um, and uh, again, not all that close together, 50% higher, that one's 50% richer than the other according to our standard measures. And if I remember correctly, we got two of them wrong and one of them right. And all, I think you should all have been thinking, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, should have been what's really going uh, on through your head. Um, so let me uh, uh, go into what this might be all about. Let's look at the images from that game again. You're looking at the type of house a family lives in and the things they own to figure out who's better off and who's worse off. But that's not how surveys work. Surveys look at how much each family is spending in a year. That's only things like food, rent, school, home repairs. That's what's getting calculated, not necessarily what you can see in people's homes or the way they look. The amount each home is spending gets divided by the amount of people in the household. And once we get that number, we can plot all of our homes on this graph. When economists represent income inequality, this distribution graph is how they show it. Left to right shows how much people are spending, wealthier people to the right, down and up shows the number of people who live at a given income bracket. The closer the boxes are together on the graph, the more equal people are. A very spread out graph shows a lot of inequality. When we're looking at India, we can see a lot of people living around $2.5 a day. We usually say that you're poor if you're over here, and you're not poor if you're over here. This is the poverty line. Um, well, so this, is second, this should be second nature for this audience. Uh, we're hoping that the website is more generally observed and things like uh, density functions of, of uh, per capita income will not be as uh, natural to most people as it probably is to you. That's how, uh, we put this uh, little bit of lesson in. But let me stay here for a while to um, uh, uh, make a few comments. First of all, you know how much attention in India particularly, around the world too, but India particularly, uh, how much attention is given to the poverty rate. Uh, it's given uh, this much attention in the press, in politics, uh, and even academics who should know better. Um, and if I remember correctly, I was here, I've been here most summers, but uh, uh, I think it was 2013, is that when the last poverty line was announced? I, I don't remember. In any case, were, I don't know if you remember, there was this big debate in Parliament about whether or not you could buy lunch outside the Jama Masjid for five rupees or not. And I think it took a whole afternoon for members of Parliament to argue about whether or not that was possible. This was way too much seriousness put to uh, this particular um, uh, number. One of the things, not quite as uh, trivial as what is a, a, a density function, um, first thing to note, given your answers to the, to, the, to the little game, it's not that easy to tell apart who is who, which one's richer, which one's poorer. We showed you a few, a couple that were to the left of the poverty line, several to the right, 
and it didn't make any difference. The, the one that you got right was not uh, people who were on opposite sides of the uh, poverty line. Those were all on the not poor side of the, uh, the poverty line. And you can see that whatever it is you think how people live, it's not clear that the way that we measure it uh, in general, and that we put so much emphasis on in politics and in policy, uh, is all that important. The other thing to notice, and this one you might remember from uh, some course or other, is where is our poverty line? Well, we, uh, we chose it just to be somewhere near the, what, what is it, up $2.30 or something like that these days. This red line is as close to that as possible. That actually separated two of our uh, columns for the histogram. And if you notice, those are the two columns with the most people. So there are 16% of the people just to the left, and 17% of the population just to the right. And if you, really? Oh, I, I got to go faster. Uh, if you, if you um, uh, change the way that price indices are changed by a trivial amount, if you decide that you need 2,100 calories a day instead of 2,200 calories a day, if you change almost any assumption whatsoever, the red line will jiggle back and forth. Uh, and in fact, uh, let's see, my colleague Angus Deaton said that he single-handedly reduced poverty in India by 140 million people because of one minor change, minor correction in a price index. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, one of the things to emphasize and that this uh, project is supposed to illustrate is to debunk this nonsense of uh, the, the poverty rate. And as you saw in pictures, it was really hard to tell who was poor and who was not. In fact, um, any place greater than the bottom 8%, which are also not hard to, not easy to distinguish, that's the, first, that's the first column, anything up to somewhere in the middle are virtually indistinguishable. Okay, um, let me step back. I guess I should do, uh, this is consumption per capita as measured in the NSS survey. It's the actual survey instrument that we used was the India Human Development Survey that's uh, done by the National Council of Applied Economic Research um, uh, every, every year. The whole distribution does not come from our 100 families. The whole distribution comes from the actual gigantic survey. Uh, and we chose 100 families that happened to fit um, into, uh, uh, this, uh, into this distribution. The distribution is correct. The particular 100 families is the best we could do to, uh, fill, in, uh, to fill in the curve. It's 100 families, 20 locations, five, five families per location. Uh, these were the, our sites. The way that we picked the sites was, well, okay, if there's 20 locations, that meant that every location had to uh, represent about 60 million people. So any place that happened to have 60 million people, I went to the IHDS uh, survey, which was generously provided uh, uh, to me by uh, my employer, NCR. Uh, and um, so rural Andhra Pradesh had um, rural Andhra Pradesh had about uh, 60 million people plus or minus, so they got their own. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we went and uh, picked some village they, for for very legitimate uh, confidentiality purposes. They couldn't tell me the name of the village, but they could tell me the name of the, of the taluk. And so I just picked at random another village uh, near the taluk just to stay close. That was probably not necessary. Uh, we have six urban areas. Um, uh, the two met metropolises, Delhi and Mumbai, but also Rajkot in, in Gujarat, Varanasi, Tirunel Valley, and Kojikot, which I always mispronounce. Um, and then uh, we sent our interviewers out to uh, interview about 10 families per place, 10, and then I picked uh, which five <laughs> uh, would actually fit our uh, distribution and um, uh, uh, lead to the final distribution. So then we sent 
to those families. The photographers, uh, Rajan Zaveri is here. Oh, and also Avanti Bansal is our, is our narrator, also here in the audience. Um, we sent photographers, sociologists, interviewers uh, to, to, take, to take the pictures and show what these people's life look, looks like. The sampling was no big deal. We're not doing statistics or anything. It just sort of had to look like India. Um, we, what we chose was uh, consumption per capita because that's standard. I won't go into the details for why consumption and not income or anything else that we might have uh, picked. Um, but you might, but there are some several well-known problems with measuring consumption per capita. And for that, I'd like to uh, at least look at one because I don't think we'll have time for more. One of the things was, you notice that in the previous video, it said that we were doing per capita consumption, right? So that means three adults living together is a family of three. And two adults and their infant child is also a family of three. Well, there's, in, the law, in the literature, you probably all know about adult equivalents and so on and so forth. And so we were wondering, so exactly how important is the assumption of per capita without any correction for people's um, uh, uh, needs or anything at all related to economies of scale within the, within the household. And this is what we get when we change the assumptions. What you will be able to do when the website is finalized is you will be able to play with how much does housing cost because until this most recent NSS survey, nothing about housing was included at all. There, you can uh, try to eval evaluate some of the durable goods that people have because if it's, uh, if it's more than one year old, it is not counted in the survey. Televisions, uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, if they're more than a year old, I was looking at my house, I had almost nothing that was less than a year old. Uh, um, uh, that's not counted at all, uh, as, you, as you know. Government subsidies are not counted. This is actual expenditure. In Tamil Nadu, they give rice away for free, and it's good enough quality that people eat it, as opposed to some other places I could mention, but I won't. Um, and of course, this per capita adjustment. So just the per capita adjustment shows that you could start out with this, and then when you put in fairly standard um, uh, weights, the whole distribution shifts over to the right a little bit. We have very few people who are really, really poor, Um, because a lot of those are couples with babies, <laughs> and so a lot of them just get pushed up. It's not, it's not three people in the household, it's 2.1, 2.2, whatever. Um, and in fact, the whole distribution seems to shift quite around quite a lot. Um, and it looks a little bit more equal to me, but I did not calculate anything about that. Um, now let's think about housing. So here are two houses in Varanasi. Uh, th this is looking at the other extreme of the income distribution. This is our second richest household to the right. Uh, and our, the, a person in the top decile, but just barely, uh, on the left. A couple things that are interesting about this is that uh, the fellow in the classy hat um, lives in this apartment building, but he just occupies this apartment. This guy is a lawyer and he owns the entire building. He owns the entire building and therefore doesn't pay rent and therefore nothing related to housing is attributed to him at all, whereas this guy is in the 99th percentile because he's paying rent. So we've, this guy, according to standard measures, is considerably richer than the guy on the left when, if you were to look, I'm not going to do this, but if you were to look around Home 91, you'll see he has everything. And this guy has a few things. Uh, the 360 there would have been uh, instructive. I don't have time to show it to, to you. This is his one room in this one apartment. And he has a few things, and a few of them he bought recently because his son helped him out. But in fact, you would tell that they are nowhere near similar in their uh, income levels. And that guy in Home Number 1 is way richer the person in home number 99. Um, now to just t t take one more example on that, we have um, 
this is a house in uh, Jodhpur, Rajasthan. And he's very poor according to our survey. This is the interior of the house. You could see that, well, let me speed this up. Dirt floor, canvas uh, roofing, and so on and for so forth. Uh, but there's another one, second column, second up, also from Jodhpur. Bare, they're both below the poverty line, but as you notice, they're just bare, they're not too different from each other at all, okay. Uh, and this represents the introduction of the Prime Minister's housing project. These people uh, are look considerably better than the other ones, but they're actually only a little bit. And the interesting story about the little bit is on the previous um, household, this one, uh, the housing program, this isn't the way it was supposed to work, but there was a little bit of a bribe involved. And this guy decided he would prefer to send his kids to school, saved the money that he would have paid for, for the, to get the housing project and ended up choosing to have a, a, a fairly poor looking house but send his kids to school uh, rather than the other house that got the building but did not send uh, their kids to school. Now which one's richer and which one's richer over time and which one, which one, these are all choices. And the things that we're seeing is we do not see savings. We do not see the savings for the uh, sending kids to school. We only uh, see the expenditure. And because we don't see savings, we didn't realize that he was saving this for school. OK, let me uh, uh, move much faster ahead. One of the things that's a limitation to this entire project is we're looking at a snapshot in time. Uh, and a lot of the story, life is dynamic. People's um, Lives play out over a long period of time. People are making plans for the future, like the guy with the education. They're saving, which we don't measure. They're uh, wondering about whether they get sick, and therefore, do they have to uh, make some provisions for that? And uh, there are very few ways that we could show the uh, movement over time. However, we did do two. One is this village in Rajasthan, and one is a village in Assam. So let me play this real fast. These are. Uh, aerial, I mean, satellite imageries. And I'll tell you, well, I think it's going to play by itself. So the way that I picked the households to actually interview was I went to Google Earth. And I looked at this. This is one of our villages that we picked at sort of random. Sorry, we picked the village. And I looked at this in, uh, um, uh, from Google Earth. And I said, oh, geez, we're going to have a lot of our poor people from here. Because <laughs> uh, this didn't look really good at all. Um, to me. But then when we arrived, which was uh, January 2018, we found this, which was, this is where the uh, Prime Minister's housing project went through. And all of that empty space that was over here was all filled in with either completed houses or, um, uh, uh, or under construction. The other thing was this road, you see that dark road at the top? That was not in the original picture, which is 2015, but it was there in 2018. And we saw that a lot of farmers were switching crops from Bajra and Jawar, very low value crops, to mango trees and pomegranate trees because they knew that this road was going to um, um, lead to much higher returns for their farm product. So there were lots of things going on, uh, mostly driven by public policy, the housing program, but also the, um, uh, the, the construction of the road. The other story we had, oh, no, actually I want to show one other thing. This is my favorite picture. Uh, in one of the houses in Rajasthan, we had, uh, just a, as a way of trying to get some dynamics out of this story, is one of the households uh, recently got, actually, do you know what this is? It's the ring that women use to carry pots of water on their head. And it's Rajasthan, so they're big in textiles. And the, this particular house recently got a, um, 
a much more convenient source of water. And they did not need this ring anymore, but since it was a pretty thing, they put it up on the wall as a piece of art. And so I happen to like this picture. Uh, but more than, more than that, it was that it represents true progress for this family that no longer needed to carry this much water. Assam had a different story altogether. This is a private sector story. What happened was in a early 2000 teens, a Chinese trader came along and said, if you convert your paddy fields um, into fish ponds, I will give you fingerling fishes. I will come back at the, in a, however long it takes fishes to grow until when they're about this big. They always use this as a marker. I will buy the fish and you'll make a lot more money. Now, you might think that was an invitation for monopsony power, but it turned out the villagers figured out they could buy their own tanker truck. So if the Chinese trader thought he was going to exploit them, they were sorely disappointed. But what did happen was between 2000, I think this is 2015 and, and 18, you see that all of this, all of the bright green is in fact the fish ponds that people had introduced just recently in order to make um, uh, considerably more money. So once again, uh, what will be in the website is up on the top, there will be something that will say, let's talk about these villages, and stories like this will um, become available. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this village because a lot of the people who made the change were Muslim, and this is in Assam, and I'm not, I'm afraid to go back to give them back their uh, photographs uh, just in case. Since I'm out of time, I won't be able to do this, but I would, uh, but in, the, in section three, which is the homes, this allows you to go to any home whatsoever. If you click on any of the boxes, like the red box there, um, it'll allow you to explore the house. You can see inside and out. We have notes from the sociologists telling a little bit about the, about the village, just a little bit about the family. Uh, and you can actually see what does life actually look like in all of these places. The one that you just saw was actually a relatively well-off house that looked like a shack. Just, just, wanted, to, just, just wanted to point that out. Um, and you can spend a lot of time going through just figuring out who's to the left of the poverty line, who's to the right. But actually, I wanted to not really emphasize poverty. It's, what you, I think you will discover that almost everybody here look approximately the same. And so when we talk about um, uh, uh, poverty in India, we're talking about an awful lot of people. And just for one point of comparison, th this has the dollar a day things. The reason for that is because rupees change every day. Um, the American poverty line is $18 a day. That's right here. So we have three people only that are above the US poverty line. I know that you're probably interested in our Mr. 1%, but I'll leave that for some other time. But thank you very much for letting me um, uh, show you this. <laughs>